Hello and welcome back to the Jonas.net. My name is Donald Jonas. This is my fifth tutorial on Zenjil 3.0, 64-bit edition. Zenjil 3.0 is based upon the Ubuntu 12.4 Server Edition LTS. Now, in this fifth tutorial, I'm going to cover setting up email and setting up the Zopra groupware, which gives you the webmail ability. Let's begin. We're going to click on Mail, General. Now. If you want to set your, uh, if you have a smart host that you have access to, you can set up the parameters for that. A lot of ISPs do provide you with smart, smart host services. You can put that information in there. It is optional. And if it does require authentication, you have that ability right there. I'm going to keep this very basic. Most of these I'm going to keep at the default. I'm going to scroll down to mail retrieval services. I'm not going to configure it for uh, the POP3 protocol or the secure protocol for POP3 or the standard IMAP protocol. I'm just going to use actually none of these. I'm just going to use the manage sleeve scripts. I'm going to allow the groupware to handle the rest of it. That's pretty much it. And the manage sleeve scripts would be like rules set up in your email out of office replies, things like that. So you definitely want that. So let's click on change. Well, I mean, I guess I could allow retrieve mail from external accounts. That is kind of cool. It allows the user uh, to retrieve mail from external accounts. And this can be set up in the user corner. Uh, the user corner is something I've covered in previous tutorials. I can touch on that real quick at the end of this tutorial. User corner gives the ability for the user to change your password or set up external accounts. Uh, for email so they would have their domain email and if they want to add one of the more popular webmail accounts to retrieve mail to their inbox that'll give them the ability that once again comes down to your business needs um, I guess I can check that for right now and change and that's pretty much it on this screen now there's a couple other things we need to do relay policy for network objects. This is very important. Now, your users from your clients, other devices like copiers that scan the email, need to be able to be trusted within your network to send email. So you're going to have to set up a group, a relay group, a parameter in which these devices have the ability to send out email and not have any problems. So let's click Add New. And we're going to allow a relay add a new one and we'll call it test.lan which is the name of our domain once again apply your name I want to do it by range so anything under my DHCP scope now you can set this parameter forever you want you can set it from 1 to 254. I mean, I'm just going to go from 100 to 200. But this is all open for interpretation, and that's it. I'm just going to leave it very simple. Anything on my network that picks up an IP address off of my server between the addresses of 100 and 200 will have the ability to send through the email server. And we're going to click on Done and add and then save changes and that's it so most of my PCs when I set up my email client whether it is the Outlook client or Thunderbird uh, whatever there's lots of th uh, email clients out there they'll have the ability to send through or if you have a MFP copier devices like that as long as you're within that scope if it's a fixed address you shouldn't have any problems I'm not really going to cover mail, mail filter options. We'll scroll on down here. And we're going to go into gray listing. Now, gray listing to me, I like gray listing a lot. This is either you like it or you don't like it kind of thing. What gray listing, I guess, basically does is my interpretation of it is somebody sends you an email from an unknown IP domain name your server doesn't answer and then most legitimate servers will resend the email in a very short span of time 
anywhere from a couple minutes, maybe 10 minutes, and varies, then you will accept it. The server will say, okay, you're legitimate, we'll take your email. And from that point on, it will accept it on the first try. The whole premise behind this is spammers, they don't try a second time. They just send out their email as a big blast. And if your server doesn't respond, well, then you lucked out. You don't get the spam. And they're not going to try it again a second time in most cases, very rarely. So it's kind of cumbersome at first as it learns the different domain names that generally send you email. But in the long run, the payoff is it cuts down on your spam. So I like to enable it. And we'll click on change and save changes. Just remember here, nothing's set in stone. You can try it for a while. If you don't like it, you can always uh, uncheck it and uh, not utilize it. All right. Okay, we can go on down here to mail filter. Now, these are pre-configured with uh, by Zential, which is really nice, and it already puts the parameters in for you. The one thing I like about this new version that I've, I've noticed that on the previous versions, I had to run the firewall in order to take advantage of these really great spam filters. Now, a lot of administrators, including myself, I like to handle my firewall traffic by different means. So it wasn't to my advantage to run the firewall, which is a very good firewall, mind you, in Zential. But I did want to take advantage of these great um, anti-spam features. Well, with this new version, you don't have to run the firewall in order to take advantage of this. This is just my observation. So that's a plus. So you don't have to enable the firewall, but yet you still get these uh, spam features, and they work very well. I've been using it now for a while, and... Um, You'd be amazed at how much spam winds up in your spam folder, courtesy of this. Now, the other part I'm going to touch on is going to be groupware. And we're going to go under general. And enable Outlook access. Um, I'm not going to cover really too much of this. I'm going to enable the instant message integration. That's kind of cool. Spell check. Definitely active sync. This active sync is a, is a great protocol. I believe it's using a protocol called DPush, previously known as ZPush. To summarize that, what it does is, if you have a mobile device, and one of the popular Android phones, iPhones, the Windows phone, and it utilizes what is called the Microsoft Exchange Synchronization Protocol, the active sync protocol. When you go to your device or a tablet, you choose active sync. All you really have to do is put in your domain name and then a slash and then your username and password and the address of your server and that's it. It will synchronize for you. It will run you through a few steps and you just, you know, read the steps, proceed with it, and then the end result is you get your email on your mobile devices and phones, you get your calendars, you get your contacts. It works verbatim against the webmail on your client, so if you delete an email on your phone, you will no longer see that email on your client or in your webmail. So it gives you another way to retrieve your email. So it, I think it's great. So definitely you might want to try it and play with it. A lot of people do like it a lot. So we'll just, uh, and also there's a enable single sign-on with Kerberos once again. At this point, I'm not going to utilize that. I'm just going to click on change. And over here, I'm going to utilize the IMAPI Secure and Calendar Secure. Utilizing the digital certificate we had created earlier. And you can set quota if you'd like. I'm going to save changes. This will only take a minute or so to apply. Next, we're going to have to install the spell check. So we're going to the apt apt get install a s b e l l dash, and I'm going to utilize English. This is for your spell check, so you have your dictionary. Choose the appropriate language. 
that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and log into the webmail. Let's type in the address, HTTPS, server01. That's where you would put your fully qualified domain name once you get your uh, record set up on the internet. And it's going to be called Web App, A-P-P. -P. And press enter. And add the certificate. That's a very nice web interface, I must say. Zarafra did a wonderful job in this new version. Let's go ahead and log in. We'll log in with... Um, Donald. And as it loads, it's not kind of nice how it just glides right in. Very cool. It's your standard webmail with a wonderful interface and it has a few features that I find unique that are very, very cool. So if you click over here, you can add widgets. Say so you want to add a chat with a users, there's uh, Zen users, um, you can add users, there's lots of cool things here. You can add your Facebook and your appointment under widgets. If you don't like widgets, you can just remove it like that. There is an excellent calendar. Um, you can add more calendars, you can share your calendar out. Very straightforward, just to use other calendars from other operating systems. It's pretty much set along the same lines as far as sharing. Task. Contact. Settings. If you want to add up delegates. If you want to go into mail and set up a signature. Out of office assistant. So if you're going to be out of office and you want automated replies, there you go. It works great. Under advanced, you have lot of other features that I'm not going to go through but they're there make you aware of them if you want to play with it when you set up your server there's a lot of really great features they have in here and we can re expand this and look at the email I mean if you want to share with your contacts or any of these it's it's the same as you were going to do with the cal as I was going to do with the calendars and you can open a shared folder so if you know the person's name who shared out their inbox you can just go ahead and add it or calendar or contacts, whatever they shared out to you. So this is basically a wonderful interface. You just need to get in there and get familiar with it. Um, the other interface that the previous versions of Zential used, the, is still there. And we can log into it. Some users maybe don't like change and they want to stay with this interface. I always like changing it to uh, classic. Gives you that familiar interface. And it's, like in my previous tutorials, it's the same uh, interface that I did on the 2.2 uh, Zential tutorials. You have your calendars and your contacts and you can go under settings, out of office. So they, they give you the best of both worlds. They give you that new interface, which I really like a lot, and they give you the, the traditional one that they've had for a while, which is very solid. And most people I have seen that use this really like it a lot too, um, people I've worked with. So you get two options. And I'm glad they didn't remove this one because a lot of people like this one. And like I said earlier, they don't maybe adapt well to change, or you can maybe give them both and they can do baby steps. They can work on this one then work on the new one. So it's always, it's always good to add and not take away. You know in some instances OS's they just like to take away and then you're stuck trying to train users on the new method. It's always good I think to leave them both in and then maybe with the next release remo remove it. It was very smart thinking by uh, Zafra and Central. I like that. All right, let's log out of this. And that's pretty much it. Uh, the email is set up. You can utilize your mobile devices with it. Uh, you can set up your clients. The clients will be trusted to email through it. You have webmail set up, so you can check your email from pretty much anywhere in the world. 
and um, you have two wet pull your faces and they both look really nice another quick thing I wanted to uh, touch on was the uh, user corner user corner that I did mention is right here uses port 888 you can open that up to the internet or you can just leave it internal let's call it server 01 port 888 now this would be you know uh, if you port forwarded this on the internet so users can change passwords at home um, that's all it ha does have a digital certificate so uh, you know it will have a degree of security if not you can just leave it internal this comes in handy especially for like uh, Linux desktops and you want to change your password you know with the Windows once you join the uh, Windows computer to the domain you can just change the domain password by traditional methods by using the control delete option so we'll go into user corner here I just want to show this real quick and you will just log in with the username, like say I'll log in with uh, Donald. And once I log in, I have the ability to retrieve email from external accounts or change my password. So that was something I had mentioned that I did want to uh, bring up. And let's get back into the group where. So thank you for taking time and watching my tutorial on Zential 3.0 email setup. I hope you watch my next tutorial. My next one will be my sixth tutorial. That will be adding a secondary domain controller. That is definitely important for redundancy. So thank you once again for visiting the Jonas.net and have a nice day.